if you've been reading Nigerian newspapers for the last two or three weeks and watching Nigerian TV and following Nigerian social media, you would be concerned about the leadership. The conversation is not about electricity, about infrastructure, about education, about healthcare. In the last one month, all the conversation is about the National Assembly, the Executive, the Judiciary, conflicts between this politician and that politician, confirmation of EFCC, there has been no serious conversation around the people. The, the problem with all that noise is that it has all the consequences of noise. No matter what you're doing, if you create too much noise, nobody sees your good work. Nobody is in progress on security. Nobody sees progress on the fight against corruption. All we see is a constant struggle between certain politicians and others holding this entire country to ransom. And all of us have been sucked into it. So let me join the Sultan by calling on our political leaders at the national and sub-national level to please remember that elections are in 2019, not 2017. Nobody wins an election in 2017. Everybody from the federal government to the state and local government has to ask one question and one question only. How do I make Nigeria? How do I make my state? How do I make my local government, my emirate, the attractive destination for the scarce capital plan around the world? Because at the end of the day, a nation and a state is only transformed by vision. Borno and Yobe states, if they were a country on their own, were poorer than Niger and Cameroon and Chad. Because we have adopted an interpretation of our culture and our religion that is rooted in the 13th century mindset, that refuses to recognize that the rest of the Muslim world has moved on. At the age at which girls get taken out of school and married, the number of children that they have, having babies every year. What is our attitude towards educating our girls? What is our attitude towards child spacing so that we can financially maintain and educate and bring up children? What is the purpose of a large population that is not educated, that is jobless, that is unemployed? Of what benefit is it to the North to have three million children out of school, roaming the streets, begging. We have to look at what our religion actually says, as opposed to what culture says. And we have to have the courage to go through the path that all societies went through, which is to stand up and challenge intellectually worldviews. I mean, some of the examples are horrendous. I'm sorry, but a current issue yesterday, if it is true, what I read, 200 people died of meningitis in the state. The governor was asked and he said, it is God's curse on us for the sins. For the sake of fornication, which apparently does not happen in America, which is why they don't have meningitis. I mean, look, how have we reduced ourselves? What have we done as a people? That we have placed ourselves in this situation where simple things, it's a medical issue. You don't have vaccines, you don't have vaccines, you don't have vaccines. 